Now, are the two NASA astronauts who arrived aboard the International Space Ship on a Boeing Starliner over a month ago stuck in space? Butch Wilmore and Sunita Williams are trying to identify and repair the numerous technical issues that occurred in the capsule during the launch. Uh, this vehicle should eventually be able to serve as a space taxi for astronauts. Their mission was supposed to last 10 days, but today NASA now estimates that they will not be able to return before the end of August. To talk more about it, I'm joined by our science editor, Julia Seeger. Hello, Julia. So first of all, what just remind us, what exactly is the International Space Station? and how do astronauts normally get there? So the ISS is a sort of space platform, if you will, that is in lower orbit and which is always permanently occupied by an international team dedicated to scientific research. And it was actually assembled directly into space starting in 1998. There are five founding uh, nations, if you will, so the US, Europe, Russia, uh, Canada, and Japan. But in reality, it's uh, astronauts from all nationalities that take turn into space for certain missions. Now, to reach the ISS, they use what we call space taxis. Uh, they can dock directly onto the ISS, as you can see here. So this is really a uh, Star Wars-like. They, they, they really dock to the mothership, if you will. And uh, this is actually what you're seeing here on this on this, uh, this footage, is the Starliner docking. Now, the Starliner is supposed to become the next generation of space taxis. The older generation, you all know it. It's, of course, the space shuttle by NASA, which is uh, now out of service, but also the Russian Soyuz. And what happened is that when the space shuttle became uh, out of service, NASA had to depend on the Russian Soyuz because one of their other program, Orion, didn't work out. So what they did is that in 2014, they asked uh, SpaceX by Elon Musk and a Boeing to create the new generation. Of course, SpaceX, as always, uh, you know, reacted very swiftly and created the Dragon crew, which has been up and running for four years. But Boeing has been lagging behind in a big way. But finally, on June 16, they were able to uh, take off the Starliner on on board, you have it's a manned uh, mission, so you have two astronauts that you can see here, uh, uh, Butch Wilmore and Sunita Williams. The takeoff went well, but very quickly they were able to identify helium leaks, uh, but also thruster issues. They managed to dock to the uh, on the ISS, uh, but even that they had to do it manually because there was other uh, issues there. And since then, NASA has reported the has um, has pushed back the date of return to Earth twice already, and uh, they've been saying that there's really no issue. They can bring them back whenever, tomorrow even, if, if uh, needed. But they're taking the opportunity, because they're already in space, to run some tests, to identify what's happening, to really be able to understand the problem. Now, they allowed journalists to speak to both journalists aboard. Let's listen in to uh, Sunita Williams. Um, I, I feel confident that if we had to, if there was a problem with the International Space Station, we can get in our spacecraft and we can undock, talk to our team, and figure out the best way to come home. Um, yeah, we've, like I said, we've practiced a lot, so I have a feeling, I have a, a real good feeling in my heart that uh, this spacecraft will, br will bring us home, no problem. So Sunita Williams is very enthusiastic there, but this is the official version. What we're hearing is that NASA is, of course, thinking about a plan B. Uh, we also know that they've been looking into uh, whether they can expand battery life, for instance. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, they, 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 they're going to have to think of a plan B in case they're not able to rectify all of these issues on board. So, Julie, given what you've just told us, in the event of an emergency, what procedures kick in in order to bring those astronauts back? So, to usually what happens, for instance, if there's a, you know, a risk of collision with a space debris, that's usually what happens. The ISS crew has to uh, take refuge and safety uh, in the capsule with which they arrive there, and they're supposed to leave again in that capsule. Now, today you have three capsules that are docked. The Starliner, which doesn't seem to be operational, then you have the Soyuz by the Russian, and you have uh, the, uh, the the Crew Dragon by SpaceX. Uh, so if you actually c calculate all of it, you have seven spots. So presumably everybody can come home, but it's actually a difficult choice for NASA because they either have to choose the Soyuz by the Russians or they have to use SpaceX. And the problem is that if they, they, they choose SpaceX, they are going to have the role of a savior, and that's going to strengthen their dominant position in that field. And also we know that Boeing has had many issues, especially in its commercial sector. Uh, and when it comes to the Soyuz capsule, well, even though geopolitics doesn't translate into space, we know it. there's a lot of cooperation there. Uh, it still is not going to look good for NASA and for Boeing. Geopolitics still obviously 
expanding way beyond Earth's frontiers into space. Now, we're talking there about the International Space Station. It is an ageing station, and we've been wondering many years, when will it be decommissioned? And we recently learned that it will be SpaceX. Exactly. On June 26, NASA announced that it had selected SpaceX to deorbit and destroy the International Space Station. Now, the, re the way they're going to do it, they're going to create a new vehicle that is literally going to tow away the International Space Station, bring it back towards Earth and crash it onto Point Nemo. Point Nemo is in the middle of the Atlantic. It's the point known to be the furthest away. And this is actually from Earth, and this is what we actually do with deorbited satellites. This is a space grave. This is where we crash everything, all the space debris. Now, it's, it can sound crazy. And when you speak to people from the field, they tell you that they have all this mechanism to really make it sink to the bottom of the ocean, but it's still uh, quite crazy. Even though it's also important to say that whenever it comes into the atmosphere, most of the debris actually blows up uh, into a fireball. Now, of course, the next question is what will replace the ISS? There are two different uh, projects that seem to be uh, holding up. So you have the Starlab project, which is a, a U.S.-led uh, joint venture between Space Voyager, but also Airbus and uh, Mitsubishi. You also have the Chinese project, because they were actually excluded from the ISS project, so they created their very own uh, international space uh, uh, station, and it's called the Tiangong, so we'll have to wait and see. Maybe we'll have two different international space stations.